The FireTech FTQ module includes a number of settings that can be configured by the user. These settings include timecode format, including SIMT and FSK, which it's able to both read and generate. There are time zone settings if you're going to use a GPS start time with the module. There's options for disabling the power button, auto scrolling the channel status screen. There's a heartbeat or safety connection. You can set a two second time for Talon mode. The module can start up as standalone. You can enable the small remote and arming with the small remote. You can also enable crew control options. You can enable or disable the external trigger. You can set how long the module waits for you to set an ID before it automatically sets the ID. For modules configured with an audible buzzer, you can enable or disable the buzzer. You also have options for a factory reset, and you're also able to save the configurations or cancel out of the selections. You don't need a USB mouse as just shown to access these settings and configuration files. You can use a USB drive with a config.csv file that can be loaded into the module along with and at the same time as the script if needed. Let's jump over to the computer to walk through the config.csv file. The configuration file is a comma separated value file or CSV file similar to the script. The file name is CONFIG and it can be in uppercase or lowercase but must always be config.csv. You may have multiple config files for different configurations, so it's suggested to use different folder structures to organize your config files. For this demo, we're going to create a config file that enables the small remote and allows arming of the system with the small remote, sets the module to Talon mode, enables timecode output of SIMT LTC 25 frames per second and mutes the buzzer. Now I've already created a config file here in this folder, but it is the default config file and all of the values are zero. This first column, column A, are the values that are actually read by the module. Column B, is there to provide a description of each value for the user. Now in our situation, we are going to set the timecode output to SIMT LTC at 25 frames per second, and that's a value of one. The time zone we're not going to change. We'll leave the UTC offset at zero. We're not going to provide a GPS start time. We're not going to modify the power button settings. We'll leave the auto scroll events of the channel status menu at default for disabled. We're going to use just a single module, so we're not going to enable a safe connection or heartbeat mode. We are going to set this to Talon mode, so it fires with a two second duration. Standalone mode, we're going to set to a value of one, as this will allow the module to start up in master mode without the need of holding down the green forward button during the power up. We want to be able to arm the system with the small remote, and we're also going to enable the small remote. We're not going to use crew control, and we're not going to use the external trigger. We'll leave the auto ID time delay as default, but we are going to mute the buzzer. So now we can save this file and close this. So here I have an empty USB drive, and I'm simply going to copy the config.csv file we just created over onto my USB drive. And for this demo, we're also going to copy a script that I have over onto the same USB drive. We can load these into the module at the same time. Now this script is a simple script for just one module, for rail one, and it fires every rail, in this case starting with Q16, at a three second interval going back to Q1. 
So we can close this USB drive and eject it from the computer and go load it into the module. Now that we have the config.csv file and the script.csv file loaded onto this USB drive, we can put the module into USB host and load the files into the module. The module will recognize the CSV file and update the configuration and provide us a status of OK if read correctly. It will then tell us to press a button to continue and with the script.csv file also loaded in the module, the module will ask us to select an ID to load that script and here we can see that all 16 events were loaded correctly into the module. By removing the USB drive, the module will restart and the module settings will be aligned with the configuration that we just loaded. To demonstrate that the module will output the SIMT LTC timecode, we are going to plug in the speaker in the timecode output of the module. We'll also plug a rail into rail one now that the module has restarted, we'll learn the small remote by holding down a button of the small remote, bringing up the small remote learning menu. We associated the upper left button with the blue button and the upper right button with the green button, and we'll do alternate one and alternate two. And we can test these by pressing the button again. If I press the upper left button on the remote for the blue backwards button, I see the OK flash and a B in the upper left corner. And we can test the green button, the Alt 1, and the Alt 2. Once we're OK, we select OK on the module to lock in the learning. We'll also notice that the module has restarted in master mode with the M in the upper right corner next to the ID. And we can see that we are now in Talon mode where the rails now say T1 through T4. Now that we've learned the upper right button of this remote to the forward green button of the module, and we've enabled arming, we can hold it down and arm the system. Note the screen will flash to indicate that it's being armed. Okay, it is now armed, and when we put this into play, we will hear the SIMT LTC timecode being generated through the speaker. We will also be able to see the firing on the rails at every three seconds. Now we'll go ahead and put this into play. We hear the time code. We can see the firing on the rails going from 16 down to one every three seconds. We can put it into pause. We can continue it. We can also put it into pause and take it back into test. Whether you're operating with a single module as shown here, with multiple modules in a master controller, or multiple modules at extreme distances with the use of GPS, the ability to use configuration files can make your setup more efficient. For more details on the configuration settings, check out FireTech Firing System dot com.